गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुदेव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम ज्ञानंदमय देवनिर्मल स्फटिकाकृति आधार सर्व विद्या हजग्रीव मुस्मे शरदिंदु विकास मंदहासा स्फुरदिंदी वरलोचना अरविंद सामन सुंदरा श्याम अरविंदासन सुंदरी मुसे श्री गुरव नम श्री दक्षिणाूर्त नम श्री महागणाधिपत नम श्री पितृभ्यो नम सो हियर टुडे स्टॉक वुड बी इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ श्राद्धा so we will be learning shraddha many of you may know the word shraddha shraddha is shraddhaya kurute ti shraddham in sanskrit shraddha means devotion uh, who does much devoted any karma that is called shraddha so shraddha 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 come from shraddha this ritual of for the ancestors performing by very much dedicated and devotion with devotion that is shraddha so ancestral remedies is the name of the talk today and uh, many of you already know if you don't know from september 2nd of this year 2020 to september 16 2020 is called uh mahalaya paksha or shraddha paksha we call for those 15 days or you some people may call this one as an amalmas or purushottam mas as well uh so what is the what are the remedies for the ancestors and what kind of an uh, uh, benefits we are going to be receiving why we the importance of doing this shra shraddha those all things we will be learning today so let's begin uh, so duties to parents first of all because when human as a human we born we born with three kinds of debts one is uh, like a pitruruna that is the first one pitruruna devaruna rishiruna runa is a debt uh pitruruna is the ancestral debts needs to be clear in this lifetime devaruna is the debt of gods rishiruna is the debt of uh, saints and sages and teachers according to the karma siddhanta when we born as an human according to the vedic tradition when we born as an human these debts comes along with us from the sanchita karma whatever the karmas we brought over from the past life so we have to do some duties dharmas uh, in in this lifetime so duties to parents the human birth is held as the most important as it can lead to permanent release from the cycle of births and deaths shastras prescribed 40 samskaras purify uh, purifactory rites for rendering three human bodies sthula deha sukshma deha and karana deha deha means body sthula sukshma and karana gross subtle subtle and casual pure and fit for redemption by god's grace apara kriyas apara kriyas means the final rites post death ceremonies basically and shraddha shraddham performed for one's parents are some of the most essential samskaras see human birth is very difficult to get like you know when we came as an in this body according to the viveka chudamani adi shankaracharya says 
Manushyatvam, Mamukshatvam, Mahapurusha Samshraya. There are three things are very, very uh, difficult to get. Those three things are Manushyatvam, being a human. Mumukshatvam, having an interest on uh, spiritual gains and, uh, and uh, spiritual knowledge. And Mahapurusha Samshrayaha, and having a satsang, having a, a circle of good people, it's like a, uh, good teachers, is not so easy to get in this human life. So human, when we got this body, the soul, you know, there is a law, because in Vedic tradition, we believe there is a God in every human. That is the reason, first of all, we say Namaste. Namaste is, the meaning of Namaste is, I'm saluting the divinity within you. That is called Namaste, basically. Because Vedic tradition is the only tradition believes there is a God in every human. So the Shraddham and this post-final, like a post-death ceremonies, supposed to be done very much authentically and um, um, definitely needs to be done. So let's uh, see what's uh, next in the slide because these uh, ceremonies are very much uh, important for human life and especially these, the, the 15 days in the year, they're dedicated in the Vedic calendar for the ancestors. So what Garuda Purana says, Unnam no narakat yasmat pitaram trajate sutaha tasmat putra iti proktaha swayam eva swayam bhuva. The sun saves, sun means kids. You can call son and daughter both. Saves his parents from the hell called put. And there are different hells. So put and is therefore called putra. In this world, as well as the, in this world, and as well as the next also about anityani sharirani vaibhavo naiva shashvataha nityam sannihito murtyuhu kartavyo dharma sangrahaha means bodies are transient, tra transient, wealth is fleeting, death is ever hovering, hovering, dharma, virtue alone should be accumulated. As a human birth what we supposed to earn is which which will come along with us is the dharma the right karma of course you need wealth to live you need wealth to give it to your kids and family and all those that is all material life but along with that we all supposed to earn and accumulate the dharma and karma anityani sharirani anityani means it's not forever, this body. It will some, one day it has to go. Nothing is uh, eternal. Eternal is our soul. Eternal is our karma. These are the karmas we brought when we born and we take when we go. So same thing, your parents, your ancestors who were diseased, that is what they did. It is true that unless the jiva has attained Mukti, carries his accumulated load of punya and papa when he leaves the human body and departs for his next birth. Depending on Yamadharma Raja's verdict, Yamadharma Raja is the god of death. On the basis of his karmic load, the jiva is left, jiva is a soul to enjoy the pleasure of Swarga, Swarga is a heaven, suffer the misery of Naraka, Naraka is a hell, or is born into fresh bodies of the earth, man, animal, bird, worm, tree, grass, etc., etc., etc. Because we think this is only lifetime for us. No, we 
might bond maybe millions times and we may bond again millions times this is the what the words in um, bhaja govinda adi shankaracharya says bhaja govindam bhaja govindam govindam bhaja moodamate samprapte sannihite kale nahi nahi rakshate dukring karane means oh you know he addressed everyone as a fool because in the kali yuga we all are running behind something else which is not eternal so he says even though you run some uh, something which is not eternal but you should try to get this also which is eternal and he says bhaja go think of name of go lord narayana govinda 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 this is the only karma will come with you because all our knowledge all our thinking all our wisdom is not going to help in the real needy time only god's help is the most needy time and if you have any questions you can um, you know you can uh, write there and then i can answer those questions uh, in between or later in the class uh, after so shraddha and narayana bali uh shraddha is again which is shraddha is the offerings which we do for the ancestors for the deceased parents or grandparents and great grandparents and narayana bali is also is a very important um uh, remedy for certain uh, certain deaths which is indicating here as the ceremony is to be performed with shraddha it is called shraddham shraddha means faith and the resulting neeness to perform all ritual as per the vedic procedure narayana bali for sanyasis child and one who has died abnormal death means some people suicide some people murdered some people die in the war so you know accidents uh, these deaths consider as a abnormal deaths and these these whoever per people in the family died and if you if somebody knows that can trigger a pitru dosha in the natal chart so that can create a problem maybe not at that present life time for that person maybe the kids or grandkids definitely will have it some dosha so for that this narayana bali remedy supposed to be performed and especially narayana bali performing in this 15 days is one of the best timing to perform and abnormal deaths and in case where punardha uh, punardhanam is done narayana narayana bali is required so narayana bali is required for this kind of an deaths abnormal deaths now what are the benefits of shraddha i'm i'm not trying to elaborate this talk because i'm trying to this is only one one and one quarter hour session because andrew also needs to talk about the chart so let's see how so we can do uh, so benefit of shraddha many of the forces that become favorable to us our own pitrus pitrus are ancestors who come eager to bless us this is the time our ancestors look for this timing in a year when this time comes and when my my family people who are living here at the present they will offer something for me so the pitrus who come eager to bless us and they bless us vishvedevas who come accompanying the pitrus vishvedevas are the devatas some of them in the pitruloka pitruloka is the the loka means the place the the plane where the ancestors lives and mahavishnu who protects the karma and gives us the good fruit the result the so mahavishnu also will be very pleased devas like agni participating in homa also is very much waiting for this shraddha devas in swarga who are pleased with the brahma brahmana bhojanam brahmana bhojanam means feeding a brahmin priest in this 15 days is very much very very important and not only brahmin priest feeding poor also is very very good remedy for the pitru doshas 
benefits of shraddha ancestors who live in naraka who are unable to reach pitruloka pitruloka means the ancestral plane get satisfaction from special pindadanam pindadanam is a rice balls we make and then we offer tarpana on it and vikiranam food which is spread in front of the leaf in which the pitru brahmana takes the food this is the very um, authentic way of performing like you, know, you invite the brahman priest you invite the uh, pitrus on them and then you feed them our own relatives who join us for food this time if you invite some relatives and have a dinner or lunch with them also is a good thing and vayasa pindam there is a small rice ball you offer to the crowd brings satisfaction to the unknown pitrus like some you know we may we may don't even know our some of the ancestors uh who are uh who are uh, died in the past so all by doing this karmas even though you don't know but they know your lineage so they will be also pleased and your their blessings will be with you benefits of shraddha this yagya is best remedy for pitru dosha sankranti dosha amavasya dosha and any ancestral karmic relief in the natal chart of a person see there are many doshas in the charts and i think uh, andrew is focusing and he is going to touch a little bit on doshas so this pitru dosha and sankranti dosha amavasya dosha any ancestral karmic relief will it can be the get from this remedies this pitru dosha remedy this yagya will be helpful in strengthening marital status and relationships as well because if you have this doshas you might experience in some difficulties in the family life and uh, family friend and as well as uh, relationships also that might be also can be fixed this yagya will help this way your remedy will help create mental peace in the family matters and create harmony with the family this yagya can help to neutralize many lifetimes negative karma and will provide blessings from your ancestors and help on progeny so it's a you know ancestors blessings yeah there are 96 different kinds of uh, shraddhams we perform in a year on and off but these 15 days are very much important days for the shraddham the vedic text says about this mahalaya shraddham which starting from september 2nd because many people think they know ancestral karma but reality they does not you know but what what is this ancestral karmas it's this is the time called mahalaya paksha like if a paksha is a 15 days called paksha so this mahalaya 15 days annual ancestral special timing the vedic text says that during mahalaya paksha in this 15 days the ancestors in pitru loka the the ancestors plane take yama dharma raja the god of deaths permission and come to earth and accept the shraddham ancestral prayers offerings yagyas all this offered by their this uh, descendants with satisfaction so they they come to accept this so that is the reason you must know at least three um generations of your, your family your father grandfather great grandfather if your father is alive then grandfather grandfather is alive great grandfather so you must know this lineage so that names so those names will be used in this uh, remedy whenever we do objectives of performing shraddha providing momentum to the deceased ancestors present in the pitru region so that they can progress to a higher subplane of existence through the means of shraddha when they get the shraddha they will keep progressing in their higher uh, higher plane so, uh, satisfying wishes and desires of the souls of the deceased ancestors 
from one's family who are trapped in the negative reason due to the unfulfilled desires and providing momentum for their further progress. See, some people, when they die, they might have some desires unful, uh, unfulfilled. So by offering this ancestral time, some food to poor, some food to Brahmin priests and participating in these remedies, it can give a peace to the soul and they can be released with karmically and any dosha is affecting on your chart or your family, it can be fixed by doing this. Importance and need of performing shraddha. Repaying the debt to ancestors is as important as repaying the debt to God and sages and the society. It is the duty of descendants to respect their ancestors, make donations in their names, and to undertake activities that will please them. Performing shraddha is a part of obeying dharma, your virtue. Ancestors' souls, soul becomes satisfied only after receiving pinda. Pinda is rice ball. Actually, the, I will send uh, to you all, whoever registered this PowerPoint presentation, so you can have it and you can may have some questions, you can get back to me. So Pinda, you can actually Google it. Uh, it gives you the description Pindas, which we offer every day, uh, these 15 days. And water from their kids. So on behalf of anybody who wants to do these remedies, priests will do the remedy for, for them and they can request the priest, to, okay, you do it on behalf of us. So they can do it for them. In relation to this, following is a verse in the holy text Mahabharata that describes who qualifies to be called as a son or daughter. Deva Pitrukarya Bhyanna Pramadidavyam. According to the Taittiriya Upanishad, it says, one should not commit mistakes in any task performed towards to the God or ancestors, ancestors' souls. One should not avoid three rituals following verse regarding people who do not perform shraddha in the holy text Gita is insightful. So it's a, you know, always you need very much dedication when you perform this ancestral karmas. Like for example, now you may have a question, what kind of things we need to do once we order the remedy? You may request a remedy from the priest or from the from organizations, but these 15 days it's better to eat one time a day and think of your all the ancestors. Just you know, be very sattvic lifestyle. All these things will and listen some chants and do some mantras. All these things will helpful. And actually, whoever received this email. On bottom, there is an audio video link there. Uh, you can, that is a chant which you're supposed to play every day these 15 days in your whole house. It is a very great thing to play. Uh, somebody here, they ask, uh, Arjit Nath, they, I think my father and mother are alive, but I have very big Pitru Dosha in my Kundali. Which puja should I do? Um, Arjit, yes, you, you can do this remedy as a Pitra Dosha, except you, you, you know, your parents' names, all your Pitris, Pitrus uh, who deceased, their names you should list in the list and send it to us so we can do the remedy for you. Um, so only deceased. So that also, even though your parents are alive, still you are not doing it. You are doing like some priests are doing on behalf of you so that's fine you can order on the deceased ancestors names and uh, <clears throat> uh, 
and uh, there is uh, some i think uh, somebody else no okay that's the only question so next next uh, thing is patanti pitaroh yesham lutta pindodaka kriya this is the srimad bhagavad gita chapter 142 shloka due to the non performance of rituals like pinda shra, pinda shrardha and offering water to deceased ancestors etc the ancestors of such people who do not perform shrardha have to reside in the hell region which is the negative region this result in stay uh, stagnation and no progress of the descend, uh, descendants so this will definitely a dosha in the bhagavad gita also talking about pinda pradana and doing this shrardha shra shraddha parataram nanyat shreyas karam udahkritam sage sumantu says nothing is as superior as the ritual of shrardha none of the rituals vedic rituals shrardha is very much important many people say oh, i did not get a time to do perform a shrardha uh, that is the biggest uh, mistake people does we should find time for doing the shraddha karma uh, once in a year on the day of death of our parents or grandparents or whoever therefore a person having a pure intellect to discriminate between right and wrong should never abstain from performing shraddha activities related to deceased ancestors are more important than those related to god this is brahma vaivarta purana because we always even you may leave some time the, towards to the god related uh, duties but shraddha related duties you must perform that is the what this is not my words this is all puranas or in our our vedic texts are saying therefore every sacred ceremony begin with nandi shraddha there is one of the shraddha one who performs the ritual of shraddha diligently and in, in accordance with one's financial state he satisfies everyone right from daiti brahma to the significant blade of grass is called kush grass darbha no one in the family of the person performing shraddha remains unhappy this is the brahma puran shraddha at the time of the death if person feels shraddha is meaningless and nobody should perform shraddha for me after my death if somebody says that and later because of shraddha having not been performed after his death he experiences that i am trapped then at that time he would not be in the state to convey this feeling to anyone he could become unhappy because of his wish remaining unfulfilled taking this point into consideration it is absolutely necessary to perform shraddha for every deceased person by performing the ritual of shraddha for a deceased person the give and take account that exists with that person get fulfilled it is very important to perform shraddha how to participate in this ancestral remedies yagya center my, you know i am organizing will be offering a special ancestral yagya from wednesday september 2nd to 16th september this is most op uh, opportunity uh, you know appropriate and most ideal uh, opportune, opportune time to pay homage for your beloved departed departed elders parents or departed ancestors this gives a uh, solace solace to their souls along with the peace and happiness in the other plane so this is the um, you know what you can find in my website in which i'm i'm doing i'm i'm organizing this so now i i you know i think there are some questions here is there any other questions yes judy jones is this only for indian ancestors no how about if you don't know a parent so therefore you don't know that lineage yes it's a very good question uh mm, see once you order we will send you a form list of 
things, relationships. We will ask your father, grandfather, if you, whatever you know, just put their names. If you don't know, only just put your the deceased, like, you know, check, check the, that appropriate box, the deceased. If live people, leave it blank. So that way we know that person is deceased. Even though you don't know the name, we will connect with the relationship to you. So that way it will, we can perform. And it's not for only Indians, it's for all humans. I'm talking about worldly. Again, Vedic knowledge and Vedic tradition is not for Indians only. It is for every human who can absorb and understand and have a faith, they can do this. Even though you don't belong to this religion, you know, some people call, oh, this is not my religion. This, this has nothing to do with religion. This is the Vedic tradition and Vedic science and definitely it works. So I hope Judy, uh, I answered your question. Otherwise you can send me a uh, personal email also, I can answer. you. And another question, what if our parents have reinstated, does this still reach them? Yes, it will reach them. Doesn't matter how they left the body, definitely it will. And then there is another question. Uh, my parental grandmother left body, don't know date of her exist, exact age, but she has been calling out to me and asking me to help when she left body. She was alone except, yes, participate in this yajna and definitely you will feel some relax and release and her atma, her soul will be in peace. I can feel she is not in good state of place well that is the word i just spoke many points the parents looks for this this kind of an offerings from the uh, uh, family members does it matter if a person comes from a different background or religion i, I think already answered that no and uh, yes you did oh, okay george judy thank you thank you very much and if you have any questions uh, you know you can ask after andrew and, and andrew now is all is yours so i can stop sharing and then you can put your screen on that and uh, i welcome andrew foss andrew foss is a good friend of mine and he's a uh, president of uh, british association of vedic astrology and many people know him is very very well respected in this field so i requested him to please uh, give his, his insight on this so he's uh, gracefully agreed Thank you very much uh, for uh, for this, Andrew. And uh, please, uh, you, can, you know, have a, uh, the, I'm stopping my screen. Uh, there is a one more question came, Rudra Singh. What if relative were part of culture where absolutely no form of Shraddha is expected or performed? Will they still come? Yes, they can also come in the, in the presentation, I one of the things I said, may, some person may think, oh, this Shraddha is a useless, don't do this. But after their death, they don't know how to convey this message to family because they will suffer over there. So it's better, even though they are like that, if you believe in this, you should do this. So I'm stopping my uh, sharing screen. Andrew, welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Namaste. So, uh... I just, I'm just going to make a few remarks, but I think one thing is that this is in every culture, almost every culture. I mean, there may be some groups that don't do it, but most human cultures going back, you know, maybe hundreds of thousands of years, there's always been this concept of honoring the ancestors. And it's quite interesting that, you know, like the Muslims and the Christians also have around this time of year is the time for honoring the ancestors, uh, maybe other religions as well. And even non-religions, I mean, whether you're religious or not. I mean, it's ancestor, honoring the ancestors is a big thing in China. And they're not, it's not specifically religious, it's just part of the culture, I believe. <laughs> so also, there are certain yogas in the chart which are 
you know, kind of specific to this kind of the necessity of doing this. But really, everybody needs to do it. It's not like, you know, that only if you have a certain yoga that you should do it. It's just a, anyone whose parents have passed has a responsibility. That's the way I understand it. But certainly there are, you know, suppose you failed, suppose in the previous lifetime you failed to perform these rites for your ancestors, then maybe in this lifetime you have some problems which are perhaps connected to that. And we have certain doshas, doshas means flaws or faults in the chart. And the birth chart is something that you are born with. So it's reflecting the karma of before the birth. You know, it's the karma that you're bringing into this life. So it's not a fault of this lifetime. This is a, this is something which is coming from the past. So there's some mistake, something has happened with respect to one or other parent or some ancestors or something that may be causing some obstacles, health obstacles, other kinds of obstacles in this lifetime. Some debts you have, you know, the, the Rinna or debts was mentioned earlier on and we all have some Rinna. There's no, uh, nobody who doesn't have, you know, so part of that is helping our, our ancestors. So, I'll just show a, a small number of charts. Let's see. Let's zoom. I have to figure out how to share this. So do it. Okay, great. Oh. Um, Pandiji, you have to allow me to share my screen. Let me know when you've done that. Okay, I did it. Okay, thanks. Yes, that's perfect. Okay, so there's, there's three types of doshas. I just will give you one example of each. So the the standard Pitri dosha is some connection between the sun and Saturn. It's a, it's, there's a specific, you know, there's a philosophy theory behind all this, but the fact of the matter is that Saturn and the sun are the ones that generate this dosha. So for example, in this chart, we see the sun is exalted, but the Saturn is debilitated. And even though Jupiter is there, I mean, this is a chart of somebody who had a very serious disease. So whether we like to attribute that, we could attribute that. I mean, if you take Jupiter as the eighth Lord, uh, and the Lord of the eighth is with the Pitri Dosha. So the eighth house represents chronic diseases, which is what he suffered from. So there's, some suggestion to the astrologer that due to some failure or some some fault related to the ancestors that the life is being disturbed these sort of things are difficult it's like the doctors don't have a treatment or their treatments are not particularly effective these sort of things we have to look more deeply and try and understand what could be the the root cause of the trouble. So I'm sure the, this is where, you know, the priest can help us and trying to remedy this. And then, you know, some certain mantras and things would also be helpful. So this is Pitri Dosha. Pitri Dosha here, possibly more uh, with the male line, but then we have also Matri Dosha which is connected more with the female line. Matri mother, Pitri father, like that. Though Pitris generally are the, all the ancestors. But I thought I'd include Matri Dosha here. Now this is somebody who actually just died. 
in the last few hours from COVID. And uh, you can see the very severe affliction to the moon. Uh, this moon-Rahu combination is again, it's very like the sun Saturn. It's a serious, very serious dosha, which, you know, it doesn't make everybody die of COVID. I mean, people may have a perfectly fine life, but there are, there, there will be some difficulties coming out of it. And it is a kind of a dosha. So really it's best if you have any relationship between the moon and Rahu, try and do something for it because the moon is the one that fights with Rahu and tries to, uh, tries to stop its disturbing tendencies, but then that consumes a lot of the mental space uh, trying to deal with the, the situation and uh, some, some remedies are generally helpful. So these, the luminaries are, you know, the affliction to the sun, affliction to the moon, these are kind of uh, really things that one needs some help with, I think. But there's one more kind of dosha. And there are many variations to each one of these. I mean, I'm just showing a sort of extreme case because there's a clear conjunction, but there may be aspects and other relations between the planets that give rise to some, some difficulties. Now this is a Shraddha dosha. It's actually called Shraddha dosha. And it's particularly difficult dosha because it's due to the conjunction of Rahu and Shani, Saturn. So, you know, and some association in Rahu and Saturn is, uh, is difficult because they're both what we call Vayu or very strongly airy planets. So it's a bit like, you know, when a hurricane comes off the, off the Gulf of Mexico, it's shocking. So it, it has this kind of disturbing effect. And this is something that definitely needs serious remedy. One has to work on it. But it, the part of the theory behind the Shraddha dosha, why it's called Shraddha dosha, is that it's specifically a consequence of failing to perform the Shraddhas in a previous life. So, I mean, this is just the theory. I can't prove it at all. But that is the theory. And, and definitely the person is suffering to some extent in some way. I mean, this particular uh, person died of cancer and they were <clears throat> suffered from poor health for a long time. So it was, uh, it was definitely that combination in the fourth house, which, which caused the suffering and eventually uh, led to the early, early departure from this place. So, you know, all of us could do with some help. You know, once you leave, once you leave this place, there's nothing much you can do yourself. You're just kind of dependent on whatever grace comes to you. The ancestors who already passed, they may sometimes be there to guide us or some wise people may help us and guide us. But from our point of view, there's really not much we can do. The place where we can do something is here in a human body. The human body is a great weight. Like we have to carry this heavy thing compared with the lightness of the soul. But going along with that is the fact that we can transform ourselves by utilizing the machinery that we're given uh, when we get a human body. That's why, as Adi Shankaracharya said, the one of the greatest blessings that is possible on this earth is to be born as a human being. But if you're born as a human being and you don't do anything to become a, a more enlightened human being, then as another great saint said, you've essentially sold a diamond for the price of spinach. So we get all excited about things, you know, elections or whatever. There's so many things to get distracted by, but at the end of the day, when our time is up, none of that will matter at all. None of it, none of it, not what we've accumulated or relationships we've had, none of these things will be of really that much importance. What will really matter is what have we done? You know, how much good have we done on this planet? How many people have we helped? You know, what kindness have we expressed? And 
how much uh, wisdom have we accumulated because all of these things will go forwards with us and help us and helping those who passed already before us I would say is one of the great kindnesses that we can uh, express you know we want to help the people who are like they say like in the Bhagavad Gita it says that if you do a yagya you must feed some people if you don't feed anybody if you don't you know spread the love a bit then it's a relatively less effective so you know, part of what you give some money to the priest they spend it on on um, feeding a few people because it's a central part of the yagya you know yagya is life it's not like just uh, chanting some mantras so you know it's all a spreading of 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 kindness and support and all of that goes out into the universe and bounces back to whoever gave nothing we give goes for, you know it all comes back to us and the same thing is true of of any uh, harm we do to anyone if we do any kind of harm to anything eventually the harm comes back to us and we have to bear it so we should we, we need to remember this this needs to be a very well understood concept and then we would have a very nice planet there wouldn't be no climate crisis there'd be no war there'd be none of this trouble it's all because we're blinded by selfishness and we think we grab what we want and it doesn't matter how many people get trampled underneath but that's not true it's exactly the opposite is really true so you know the teachings of great teachers like jesus i mean if you actually read and studied them it would be a different world so anyway that's my small contribution Pandiji? yes andrew thank you very much and and if anybody have any questions to me or Andrew, you can unmute yourself and you can ask questions uh, directly also. Otherwise, if you don't have any questions, we can um, do the final prayer. Before I do the final prayer, you can, if you, anybody would like to order um, this uh, remedial uh, yagya, which is starting on September 2nd, and it will be done in Varanasi. And, uh, and it will be done separately for each individual person. Like, you know, it's not in a group. It will be done every day, one after other, one after other. And then um, you can order through my website, which is uh, vedikyagyacenter.com. Um, and I'm sure you might receive email that is the reason you register. So definitely you can, you will be receiving the yagya email also again today or tomorrow so you can order so and uh, some people asked me questions so we already registered and i did not receive the form actually it's in the website itself uh, we clearly says do not forget to fill the form but uh, might be it's not seen but again tomorrow we will be sending uh, all the form who registered people will be sending the forms to fill with their names of Anna ancestors and then send it us send, send us back so that way we can perform on their names uh, and i think there is another just question come from rudra singh ji uh, do this dosha show up with same significance in the navamsha andrew okay. yeah so navamsha shows even deeper karmas you know that's the Vamsha is very strongly uh, revealing what is coming from the past. So it is a problem in the Navamsha chart. And, uh, and there is another question, I think, from should different things be offered for different relatives as per culture, such as what if rice was never consumed? Would they accept pinda? Yes, pinda is done with the floor. It's not, it's a, so it's not, it's not, pinda is just in the form of rice. We make it with rice flour. But the main thing is the mantra and the black sesame, what we use. That is the, what is the main thing, the, the ritual. So still it goes because the main thing is, it's called tela tarpanam, the water and black sesame, and it's on the pindam. So it's definitely, it will, even though it's in a different culture, still 
you can offer the same thing and you don't need to offer any different kinds of things. So, any other questions? Uh, I, okay. Ancestor souls might be born again. How can we know that whatever ritual we are doing going to the ancestor? Okay, it's a good question. According to the Garuda Purana, um, you know, this ancestors might born again. Yes, definitely. But the ancestor who died, that ancestor still is in the Pitriloka. He is not just directly coming. His soul is coming, maybe reborn according to his karma. So the ancestor is still there. So that the definitely it will be reaching. This is all again. This is uh, this, uh, whatever we suggested here, it's all taken from the Vedic textbooks. It's not written by any human. So definitely because we believe Veda is the highest authentic authenticity for any, um, any kind of uh, these rituals. So Veda is saying to do this and it's definitely it will reach, definitely it will reach because there are mantras for different remedies and when mantras are working as in a remedy, so this is also a remedy prescribed in the Vedic texts. And uh, again, the, the, so how does Pitru Dosha works? I have it son with Ketu and Ketu in ninth Bhava. Wouldn't relative that I sinned against in past life be different? So helping different relatives this life helps how? Andrew? Yeah, so, I mean, that's, a little bit complicated question but the reality is that we all have some we all need to care for our past relatives and you see that i i totally agree with what Pandiji just said but there is a sort of a thread of connection and even wherever that soul has gone even if it's if he's living in the next door house as a baby there's still the thread of connection of some sort and the help still goes somewhere. Everyone needs some help, don't we? So, you know, it's, I don't think it's any, we need to get uh, any concern about counting who's where, really. It's all a part of the, the flow. Because even, the, you know, if, if somebody, it's said in the Vedic literature that if somebody is, uh, say, attains enlightenment, even the unborn and descendants get benefited. You know, it, it goes forwards and backwards in time. So these I, things... I, ha I have seen uh, uh, many times in my practice, like some people say, oh, we are doing everything, but still things are not working out fine for us. I don't know why. Well, when there is this Pitru Doshas are there, doesn't matter how, how, you know, how much you do, like, you know, doesn't matter how expensive tire you buy, but if there is a leak, you need to fix that leak. Otherwise, as much as uh, air you put, put or keep putting on, it will be leaky. So you have to fix the dosha because ancestors are connects with our soul. Mm. So that is the reason, uh, you know, we always remember our ancestors and ancestors lineage. So it's uh, always remember on these 15 days in a year, like, you know, because they, their calculation of day and night times are different. So. I have seen many people complaining about their lives, even though they have everything, but still they're unhappy, unsatisfied, like something like that. So there's some, these doshas may, might be, uh, you know, activating some problems in their life. It definitely happens. And if, it's, if you ever read uh, the Yoga Vasishta, then you're totally blowing your mind because it, there are various uh, stories in there where there are lives within lives within lives. I mean, you, you just see that nothing is very linear about the way the universe is really structured. And the, so there is an, oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. The consequences of anything, you know, it penetrates much farther than we can imagine, you know, good and bad. So it's a very uh, profound thing. The main thing is the feeling in the heart. I mean, if you are, if, if something in your heart is moved to, to do, to care, you know, this is an expression of care really, then that is some real benefit for you. 
and it's and it just radiates you know it goes out and it nourishes everything else in creation like from brahma to the blade of grass as was mentioned before because ultimately we we've been connected to everything you know everyone who's alive on earth is somehow connected to us because we've all got some kind of common ancestor we go back far enough isn't it and uh, we have somebody is asking we have done lots of tarpanas for each amavasya we also went to india and you know i i read this question and uh, my answer is you know even though still you are suffering from doshas and pains and so on that means pitru dosha is very heavy so you might need to maybe you should consider uh, showing your chart to an astrologer and uh, um and we can take a look and we can suggest maybe something different but definitely on the this day on this 15 days we must you must do this also it will be better more effective this this time of the year but again consult uh, your astrologer or us so we can definitely guide you and there and swami if i take rebirth same atma which i left come back to me or our atma does not have any identity well these all are philosophical questions uh, and again uh, if you take rebirth uh, you doesn't know because purva janma you never know what is your purva janma after the umbilical cord cut so you know which honestly same atma which i left i don't i don't think it will be the same atma or it will be the same atma i don't Thing. i don't think it will be the same uh, lineage it might be you sometime in this lifetime you born in india so, so next lifetime you may born in kenya nobody knows that is all according to your karma in the prarabdha karma and uh, sanchita karma and uh, again somebody asking me but soul is unique for each individual i totally understand the vedas pr- perspective thank you so much okay is there any difference between atma and human being and an animal and do you want to answer this question ha uh-huh. yes. ha is there a, is there a difference between atma of a human or human being and an animal yeah okay that they say a little i don't you know how we can hear my two bits but the thing is that from a jyotish perspective each birth has its specific what we call atma karaka so there is a planet which is representing the soul in this birth and people are very like that atma karaka they express that kind of behavior or tendencies uh so you know and that's what we identify we think i am so and so i am like this this is my thing so that in other words we're identifying with this lifetime with this birth with this expression of the atma but it's only an expression of the atma so when this life finishes after some time not immediately but after some time after death that concept of the atma dissolves but the essence you know the karana sharira which was mentioned earlier the subtle body the causal body rather which carries the impressions from lifetime to lifetime continues so it all depends what you mean by the the atman you see the the paramatman the supreme being and all the pure being is obviously not going to change and the impressions are also carried forwards but the the sort of uh, expression when it expresses itself each lifetime is different and definitely the experience of being a worm is different from being a human being but you know there's the famous story if you just have 2 minutes of the uh, i think it was veda vyasa and he saw this worm crossing the road and the big truck was coming you know the car the cart and it was clear that the cart was going to run over the worm and uh so there was a discussion started between the worm and the sage like uh you know the worm was desperately trying to get out of the way and the sage said well why are you trying so hard you're only a worm it might be better to move on and so the worm says no it doesn't matter what body i get i'm still trying to save it you know there's a whole philosophy of the the fact that whatever body you get however lowly you get attached to it and you're desperately trying to survive 
But then Veda Vyasa explains to the worm that actually, you know, just please let it go and I will see that you get a better body. And the worm kind of did namaste and got crushed by the cart and was reborn as some human somewhere. So, you know, there's this thing. So there's, there's, if, if there's sufficient consciousness, there is some trace that runs through all these lower bodies, according to the Vedic text. But it's, you know, obviously it's a completely different consciousness. Mm -hmm. You know, if so, you can't remember your past lives as a human being, do you think you're going to do that as a worm? Probably not. <laughs> yes. So uh, which house uh, of the birth chart we can read about ancestors and can pacify our karma with them. It's primarily the ninth house. Yes. You see? The Purva, the Purva Karma and ancestors. Yes. It's the ninth house is where you came from. That's right. So again, you know, if they, you have any specific, I think, you know, we are almost a little bit over than our so mm -hmm. we want to end here. And if you have any specific questions, you can email us and we try to answer those questions because we want to start in time and end in time. So that way we don't prolong, prolong the sessions. And uh, again, uh, I'm teaching a Vishnu Sahasranama course uh, for three, over three months. Uh, it start, it's uh, actually every Wednesday evening. If you're interested people can um, shivananda.org actually in the and their website is the link is there and interested people you can email me so I can send you the link for registration uh, I'm teaching how to pronounce and chant and as well as meaning also uh, every Wednesday that class would be in the evening so if anybody is interested on Vishnu Sahasranama uh, please uh, uh, join in that class Thank you. Let's do the final prayer. And thank you very much, Andrew, joining me and, and helping. And, uh, uh, you know, and any, we, we are here uh, to just help and this knowledge, Vedic knowledge to, uh, to be spread to everyone and everybody should be benefited, especially in this unprecedented timing. Om. Asatoma Sadgamaja Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaja Mrityorma Amrutangamaja Om Shanti 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 Thank you.